John Wolseley is my guest here this morning, and we're talking about the work he's drawn together, the extraordinary range of work he's drawn together, for an exhibition at the National Gallery of Victoria called Heartlands and Headwaters. And really what it captures is John's interactions with the wetlands across Australia. I haven't seen it yet because it hasn't opened, but I do have the absolutely sumptuous catalogue, which is chock-a-block full of beautiful work, and John Wolseley's in our studio. Good morning. Good morning, Michael. Are you in good form? Um, the sound of my voice, I'm uh, already in the bog, aren't I? Uh, I'm, I'm, I've just woken up, but I'm in good form, yeah. So tell the listener some of the places that you've visited. Well, the wonderful thing is that in the exhibition, I'm being able to show uh, the, my, my trajectory because I started in the high um, bogs and swamps, the sphagnum bogs of Tasmania in the highlands and then I w- visited and camped uh, beside all the the rivers the little lakes the, the all those mysterious forms that water takes you know the funny thing about Australia is that um, it, water does things which it doesn't do in other countries like there's so much mysterious hidden channels and aquifers and and so there I explored all them all the way up to the Fink River and then I followed the Fink River up and then I ended up on, on the wonderful great flood plains of, of um, Arnhem Land, East Arnhem Land. And you really understand when you follow those inland rivers how the rivers become the highways of the country. I mean, at least I do. I always think that they kind of lay out the logic of the rest of the country. If you understand the rivers, you sort of under- they're like the skeleton of the country around which the rest of the nation is built. Oh, that, that's that's such a beautiful way of putting it. And I'm not surprised you were able to put it like that because you yourself did write a very good book on this very topic, didn't you? We, we, we hold each other in the highest regard, <laughs> let it be said. <laughs> that's exactly how it is. So you don't just go out there and paint what you see, put a canvas on an easel and draw what's there. You actually interact or let your media interact with the work, with, with, the, with nature. Nature is a kind of holds a pen itself when you when you work yes that's the good way of putting it i i there's a wonderful thing that uh, basho said the wonderful um, japanese poet he said to learn of the pine go to the pine to learn of the bamboo go to the bamboo and i actually go i like to sort of draw uh, collaborate in in various ways. Like one of the ways is to just move my paper against the tree, uh, the burnt trees, and get them to write uh, write on it. Um, and then other and other times, I've I've actually painted uh, with the watercolor paper in the water, and I've allowed the uh, plants to collaborate with me all manner of ways of trying to get rid of the gap between us and nature we 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 are aren't we so cut off from nature now we see just see it on on the computer and the television and we live in cities We, we we we've become disconnected which is the saddest saddest thing i was thinking the other day that when we're taught to paint we're taught that the first thing to do is to put a wash across the paper and then that's the kind of ground on which you build your painting but in some ways the wash on your work is put there by nature first and then you build onto that yes well that, that's that's right well what i find is that um watercolor is rather obviously the most wonderful medium to use when you're painting water because some of the things i do is that i pool it and then i i, I let it run and sing along the paper and then it re- dries and it reticulates so i'm almost as it were recreating i'm making an analog of what water actually does so i'm i'm actually uh, someone said when i was doing it once he said oh goodness me you're playing god Let's talk about uh, one of the works, if we could. Natural History of a Sphagnum Bog, Lake Inner Tasmania 2013. Let's talk about that work. Just evoke it for us. Yes. Well, I was, as it were, dropped into that bog by a a wonderful body called the Tasmanian Land Conservancy. And uh, we were celebrating the fact that we'd... That, this, that we'd saved this huge, wonderful ecosystem. And the, to, to give you an insight into how it actually happened, 
with the the, the, epi, the epiphany, epiphanic. Is that is that an adjective? Epiphanic. I think, I think you can be epiphanic. Yes. Moment was when I was staring into this m- m- mysterious pavilions of sphagnum moss, which go down a thousand feet. Uh, and hugely ancient, and uh, the sunlit light suddenly lit up a very rare fish called a Clarence Galaxia, of which there is only about 400 left or something. And what a magic thing to, to see this mysterious fish uh, in in the water. And so uh, I, the painting is really celebrating that, and with that I actually used lots of sphagnum, um, which I inked up, and I sort of recreated that on the paper as well as the water. Now I noticed that some of the um, works in the in the in the in the catalogue that you've put here um, are you give them a key. You've attributed a musical key to them. So I, I was looking at Dystopia, the last wetland, Guida, which you say is in the key of D minor, brackets dread, anxiety, cosmic distress. So some of the works that you've been, or some of the places you've been, have struck you as places that are crying out in pain. Yes. One of the things that I have found was that when you're in... The, the, there are so many strange landscapes that you find yourself in, and you feel... A, a different emotion. Uh, I, I'm a great believer in the idea that a, an, an artist is someone who works with intuition, and you intuit what's what's in there. And, and sometimes, for instance, in that that Guida one there that you're looking at in, in your book, there, um, it's an, an area that's we saved this wonderful vast wetland. But the the tendency in a lot of that area of New South Wales is is for things like cotton farms to to raise them, and so my emotion there I I can't remember what I actually what uh, I put um, in the, in the catalogue, but it was one of disquiet and and um, uh, and worry. Yeah. So did you have a sense as you were travelling around Australia that the ecology of Australia was in pretty good shape, or did you feel as though things were Things were being challenged. Well, that's what was wonderful was that I was able to go to so many f- farming areas where farmers are, are beginning to uh, d- do all manner of wonderful things about cre- creating the uh, recreating the skeleton yes. or the the in, inner the bloodstream of the, of the ground. Uh, in fact, uh, one of the works celebrates the idea of uh, natural sequence farming. So th- that that was wonderful. But I have to tell you that uh, in many ways it was very, very sad because can, you, can one imagine a country which could turn one's greatest rivers into sewers? So that, uh, on the Darling, you know, there I was. I, I'm particularly uh, obsessed with f- f- drawing fish. Well, I, I was able to draw a lot of fish, but they were all dead. Did, did you ever feel that you were an Aboriginal country? Did the Aboriginal past or present etch itself onto you or onto the works in any way? Yes, very much so, because the part of this uh, trip, I ended up in uh, no, the Northern Territory. And uh, two particular areas, I, I went to the Daly River and the uh, Nangi people, uh, a wonderful um, elders showed me how the water works and all the plants. There's a wonderful artist, actually, uh, Patricia Mafura, and we were able to um, find plants which people hardly uh, have ever seen. Uh, and so she showed it how, I mean, how it works. And then up in um, Yerkala and Banyala, um, I was with Mulkan Wapanda, who's one of the, the great bark painters. And she and I, uh, she has p- painted about 80 uh, incredible paintings of the plants, and I've been trundling along with her, and, and uh, she, oh, we, we've had the most amazing time. And uh, so, so some of that, uh, the exhibition, is all this great floodplain of Garanali, where um, she and I were busy collecting all these gorgeous yams and things like that. Oh, you've had the most marvellous time. My guest is a great favourite with you. I know the, the painter John Wolseley on the eve of the opening of his sumptuous and bountiful exhibition called Heartlands and Headwaters. Mm-hmm.